warm weather has moved back into the mountains of southern Appalachia. It's felt almost like summer yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. Our cool weather has left. It's still well, how cool overnight, I guess in the upper 50s. Uh, mid 50s. Mid, mid 50s, yeah. But that cool, airish weather we had is, <coughs> is gone. I hear it's coming back though next week, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe even the coldest that we've had this year. So Matt and I are out today trying to see what we can do. There's lots that needs doing, but the first thing Matt's gonna do, I think, is he's gonna till up this big area where we grow our, the majority of our beans and our okra and some other things, tomatoes. We were hopeful that this year be the first year we'd ever, we've never tried to plant a cover crop, and we wanted to do that to see if it improved the soil, but we, I think we've about waited too late. Yeah. So we may have to put that goal off till next year. But we do hope, now that Matt's got more time to, to work here at home, hope that we can do, he can till this under maybe, what, at least three times, four times, something mm -hmm. like that, this winter, even when it gets cold, really cold. Hopefully, turning that over will help the soil, but also bring all the little bug stuff to the top, and then we can freeze them out. Our squash bugs were pretty bad this year. The bean bugs were not as bad, but the squash bugs more than made up for them, so. Our fall stuff is doing pretty good, especially the stuff in the back and on the bank. Up here, not so much, although our onions are okay. But we've har hardly had any rain, have we? No, it's, it's dry. It's terribly dry, terribly dry. And we've watered them a few times, but it's it, you don't want to have to water. You don't want to ever have to water, but especially your fall garden. We always think of it as easy. You just plant it and forget it and enjoy it. So uh, the stuff that we planted up here, the radishes, I don't think they even come up, did they? I don't think so. Or maybe come up and immediately died. We did water them a few times, but it's just been so terribly dry. It just wasn't enough to actually keep them going. But we're done with planting now that we've decided we're probably not going to do the, or we're not going to do the cover crop except for our garlic, but we're not going to do that today. We'll plant that in the coming weeks. I was cleaning up, I found some lettuce that had come up. I guess this is from seeds that we planted early this spring, or either some of my lettuce that actually grew and went to seed, dropped some seeds. Well, that looks better. Mm -hmm. It looks so good, it makes me want to plant a garden. It's just the wrong time of the year to plant it. I'm afraid it wouldn't be profit you much. <laughs> no, it wouldn't profit me much this time of the year. It's amazing, we're always amazed, me and Matt both, in the last year or two or three, to see the soil and look how wonderful it looks. The first time we ever plowed this, it didn't look like this. No, it was red. Red clay and rocks and rocks. Still, still, got, rocks. still got rocks, but not as many as over the years of uh, throwing them out. I used to, for many years, kept this little boy named Alex, my one of my best friends, little boys. He's grown now, but that was uh, Corey and Katie and him. I'd put them out here to throw in rocks. Remember that? Yeah. And Corey and Katie hated it, but Alex liked it. Mm. He loved it. He's little. He he'd get as many as he could and throw them off the bank. He was little, but he outworked Corey and Katie just because he enjoyed it so much. Yeah. But over the years, putting mulch on it and compost and just to trying to enrich it, we've got it looking much better. Pretty good looking soil, it's dark. Yeah. Of course, where, where we got it situated, this part of the garden is right under a whole line of trees, so those leaves fall 
thickly in it every year and they decompose in it too. I'm sure that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that you turned over a lot of little eggs and there'll be no more. Yeah, I have to do that a few times this winter. Yeah. I don't know how much it'll help, but it's got to help some, and it's good for the soil anyway to turn it over and aerate it. Yeah. I, while Matt was doing that, I was trimming around places and trying to pull up stuff. I pulled up some of my, some of the marigolds. Some of them I cut a few so I could take them <coughs> in and put make a little bouquet. And then I got me some Xena seeds and some marigold seeds for next year. I found, found one of my little markers we'd left. The beans have been gone. Anyway, so I was trying to straighten up a little bit too. Are we going to? So it's a hard decision whether or not to let Matt till up the end of the garden. It needs it. It'll look right. a lot better. But I've got my one little row of flowers down there that's still so pretty. I'll just wait and we can uh, anytime do that. Just leave them. Yeah, leave the flowers and let you till around. No, them. just leave the whole thing and then once the flowers are through being yeah. pretty, then I can till it. But then I remind myself, if it really does get as cold next week, as they say, those flowers overnight will be gone. Mm -hmm. But keep them tilling. Yeah. I mean, I can till at any time, as long as the ground ain't froze. But it'll thaw, it'll be thawed at some point. Well, since Matt convinced me to save my flowers a little bit longer, I guess we're gonna we're gonna tackle this monstrosity of a bed behind us. It's really the only bed that we've not cleaned out, other than the ones the one up there on the bank and our peppers that are still left. They're still producing, and our butter beans up there are still producing. Uh, and then of course our fall things we've not cleaned those out. But this is the last major one, major bed to clean out. It looks pretty pretty bad. The spinach over the last few years of us growing it, Malabar spinach, it reseeds itself, and this year it really reseeded itself. And most of the time I try to pull up the stragglers, pull up the volunteers that get too far down in our tomatoes, and just try to keep the spinach up on the end where the arch is, but this year I just didn't do that. And so we have spinach all the way through, so we're going to work on pulling that out. I'm wanting Matt to leave my nasturtiums though at the end of this bed just because they're, they're so pretty. That first, if it gets that cold next week, that first cold night, they'll just shrink. They'll just be gone. It'll just kill them overnight, that cold will. But we'll enjoy them until then. So this looks a lot better. We got that cleaned off. There's still, Matt needs to till up the weeds in it and we need to rake up some of the debris that we had, debris from the what we pulled down. But this is the Malabar spinach seeds. You can see they're black. I've heard that they're edible, but they don't have much of a taste. But they will eventually, these are really bright and beautiful, but they'll eventually dry out and then you can save them. You could, you could pull these off and save them, let them dry out on a piece of plate or um, paper towel or something um, and then plant them again next year or they just fall to the ground and reseed theirself but you can see they are they have like a purple juice in them so my hands got some purple on them I got some on my shirt almost like poke berries but they don't really have a scent or anything and like I said I've heard that you can you can definitely eat them if you want to but that they don't have much flavor our beds back here in the back kind of naturally have a ground cover over them in the in the winter. I naturally grow some little weeds, and I like it because I come back here when I feed the chickens, and I'll I'll grab three or four handfuls of them of the weeds so that they can have some. And most of the time, I can do that all winter long. You may be wondering why I've got watermelon rinds. Matt, I drive Matt crazy with this form of composting, but I eat a lot of watermelon. So when I first, I cut up the watermelon, get the watermelon, you know, and put it in the refrigerator so I can eat on it several days at a time. But I bring the rinds out to the chickens and I let them have them and they peck on them and make a mess out of them like chickens will do. And then when I finally think they're through with them, I clean up the chicken lot and I bring them over here and just turn them upside down into the nearest raised bed and that way they can just begin to compost 
that's an easy way of of composting, not the fancy way that most people do, but you can um, either just lay stuff on top of the ground like this, or you can dig a hole, dig a trench, and then bury it. Usually, I take the easy way and just throw it like this, throw it into the bed, and that's what drives Matt crazy. The trees in front of our house are just especially pretty right now. All of them are, actually. But Matt was just telling me and Katie about which ones was which. Most of those in there are oaks, right, Matt? Yeah, <clears throat> the old ruddy brown leaves or the reddish leaves are oaks. And then this one, it's got the real gold leaves on it. It's a hickory. There's a couple of hickory trees in there. And then there's a, can't really tell it from here, but there's one maple in there that's, I don't know, about a six, eight inch diameter tree, but it's mixed in with those white oaks and you can't tell them but most of those are white oaks with that one one or two big hickories in there that's got the gold leaves on it those hickories are so pretty especially when they're against a blue sky it's just beautiful mm -hmm. it's too cold for one today i going these in the middle of the arctic i did get hot when we were working though We have a friend. Woodpecker. Love watching the leaves fall. Mm -hmm. We've lost a lot of leaves in the last three or four days. Yep. The trees have been pretty this year, but I don't think they're as pretty as last year. A little duller. Yeah, and it seems like it, I don't know, they didn't, they started later and finished quicker or something, I don't know. Peaked a little Peaked, quicker. Yeah. You've got purple on your hands too. From them berries or seeds mm -hmm. or whatever they are. It's not from my popsicle. Oh, looks like you've been painting. I may take that paint. Be an artist. Matt's favorite thing to do in the world is to paint, like inside a house. He just loves it. <laughs> not really. It's his least favorite thing to do. I'd rather dig a ditch with a mattock in the middle of summer. Just paint in a house. I despise that. He don't like to paint. And I've done a whole lot of it too to not like it. When we first moved in, I painted a lot. I like wanted to change the color of paint all the time. Now you want to change it every week. <laughs> but it's, I've not, we've not painted in a good long while now. Some of our rooms need painting and we've not painted them in years. Our bedroom for sure, our bathroom. Been many, many years, but in the beginning I was all about, let's, what about if I change it to this color or that color? Wanted to do all the techniques like sponge painting and uh, stencils and things like that. There's enough layers of paint on our kitchen wall, it ought to fail down. Probably. There's a lot of paint on it. I've had it about every color. I've had it red, blue, blue, like a tan color blue with sponge darker blue all over it and then part of it had paper on it at one time yeah. around between the cabinets above the countertop didn't mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. yeah pap helped me with that he was at work one day and he came up here and helped me put that paper up yeah Well, we got a little bit done. Yeah. We've got a whole lot to do this coming week, though, before that cold weather gets here. We're going to have to harvest every last thing that we can harvest. We've still got peppers and butter beans, and I think that's about all. About, about all we've got. Well, the spinach, of course, but 
our fall stuff will be okay, like the turnips and the kale and the lettuce and um, we really don't have but the lettuce. I seen some lettuce up front. I didn't tell you up front. I seen some lettuce that had come up on its own, volunteered two little things of lettuce. Yeah. But we didn't plant any this fall. But the beets and the turnips and the mustard greens and all that, they'll be okay. But the peppers won't be. If it really does get as cold as they're saying, the peppers, the nasturtiums, the spinach probably, it'll all just overnight just fall down. A lot of people have told me, I didn't know you could do this last year, I think it's the first year that people told me, you can pull up your pepper plants and hang them upside down, like if you have a garage or a basement or something, and those peppers will continue to grow and ripen off of the plant. But we we really just don't have nowhere to do that. Uh, Katie would not be happy if we hung them in her, her uh, shop area of the basement. And then the rest of the basement we use for other stuff so there's just there's nowhere down there and our greenhouse is way too damp <coughs> this time of the year and it's unheated <coughs> so they would just freeze in there just like they would outside but if you have a good place to do that it'd be neat to hang them upside down if you had a, a barn or a garage or something that was really well protected from the cold boy that's pretty watching those leaves yep just slowly falling reminds me of snow which I hope that I get this winter so you can go sledding and uh, break your bones and I'm not gonna break anything but I am gonna go sledding if I get a big enough snow anyway we gotta harvest all those things and It'll be like, I always felt like Little House on the Prairie when Pap and Granny would do that before a, a big, the first big freeze. And they would try to gather the rest of the potatoes or whatever it was. I <coughs> always say, I feel like it's Little House on the Prairie and we're getting ready for winter. been a strange gardening year though we've not nearly thinking about getting ready for winter not nearly put up as much as we usually do mostly we canned green beans a few tomatoes a few tomatoes not many pickles we made some pickles oh, busy. Kraut. busy busy yeah doing we stuff. just had too busy busy of a summer matt's been putting up some stuff for us though putting up some meat he's got two deer so far one, yep. he, one here and one in Georgia. And a lot of people ask about that, how many deer can you get? It just depends on your state and what the laws and regulations are. Mm -hmm. You have to have a license to hunt and to kill deer. And how many is it in North Carolina? Uh, six, two bucks and four does here where we are. And what about Georgia? And in Georgia, you can kill 12, two bucks and 10 does which is a little excessive to me. I mean, I I wouldn't, I mean, I, I probably can't kill that many, especially where we are now, but that's a, that's a pretty big bag limit. And of course we don't even ever, I don't ever get close to that, but I like to get, I'd like to have four or five. Yeah, at least five, five or six. And then we would eat every bit of all those. Mm -hmm. been a long time since I've killed that many deer. We've been just going on two and three or so in the last few years. Matt's place that he hunts in Georgia is not near the place that he used to hunt as no. far as deer being there. They're just not there. No. People, you know, locally here, you know, find out you hunt in Georgia, they think, oh my goodness, there's all kinds of deer down there. You ought to be getting them every tree up or not where we are <laughs> and then we're overrun with coyotes and I, th I read something somewhere I don't know exactly what the percentage is but what I read was something like 
75% of all the fawns that are born are eaten by coyotes. Mm. And you get two or three years of that going on, and then of course the things has been there for 20, 25 years. Yeah. And, but now they're built up to such a population that they're, they can't be stopped. And you can't really even, you can't really even thin them out, really. I mean, they're just too elusive and mm -hmm. it's just too hard to do. And you've got that many all the time roaming around. The, they eat almost every fawn that's born. So that reduces the population immensely. Yeah. And then you just happen to be on a... And then you couple that area. with a place where we are that's not, just not a good piece of yeah. land, you know. <coughs> but I, I usually get one or two there every year, but I've got to work hard, real hard for them. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is okay. Usually you know. one or two up here, maybe three. Yeah, a couple here usually. So far he's not, we love to can deer meat, but he's not canned any so far. We just put it in the freezer, mm -hmm. thinking about Christmas and Thanksgiving for the roast or the hams that we, it's like a tr tradition, so. Yeah, I'm afraid it'd hurt Paul's feelings if I didn't have oh, a couple of them. He loves it. We all love it, but he loves it especially. It is really good. Mm-hmm. And we have, I've linked to some videos. We have a video where Matt's talking about, he, it's another question we got recently was, does, um, does he process his own deer? And he does mm -hmm. always. And we have a video where he talks about that. And he's kind of, he's cleaning, not actually processing the deer in the field, but cleaning the meat in the kitchen. And then that day we're canning deer meat, so. And then we have one about the roast and about grilling tenderloin and. We do, did we do one on that? Um, on grilling, yeah. Okay, I yeah. remember it. And maybe a couple on frying. So yeah. anyway, we'll we'll link to those if you're interested. It's good stuff, good meat. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people too, though, ask what deer did you get? What have you got so far? And, and how did you kill them? Or what did you use? Or whatever. I've killed a six point here, not, not far from the house here, with a bow. It's still bow season here, and it will be until the week of Thanksgiving. And then gun season opens. And then I killed a seven point this past week in Georgia with a rifle. It's rifle season there now. So, so far I got two, and I'm going to try to get some more. Mm -hmm. Matt's enjoyed, though, getting to go to deer camp this year. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Obviously, he's going to get to hunt more this year than he has in several years since he's now working at home. And yeah, not rest and have to leave a certain day and, you know, three or four days ahead of that day, you're starting to starting to get anxious about it, you know, and worry mm -hmm. about it a little bit. And then you got to pack everything up. And now I just go down there and when I decide to come home, I'll come home. Mm -hmm. That I like. If you caught that, you could have warded off a cold. Yeah, right. If you catch a leaf, yeah, if you just catch one, then you're not supposed to get a cold that year. Where'd you hear that from? <laughs> I think John Paris, I can't remember. Old folklore. Okay. Uh, anyway, Matt really does enjoy being there with his daddy. And mm -hmm. um, over the years, all the various different people they've hunted with at different camps and lots of camaraderie and fun and some of it mischievous fun. Yeah. Yep. Good eating, of course. Yeah, that's what I like is the, I mean, I love to hunt and I like to get to eat the meat and all that, but I also like the, just the camp atmosphere and the eating, cooking and the cold weather. And I mean, that's what it's, it's as, as I've got older, it's more about that than it is the, you know, the actual, I mean, I still like to get them, but I, it's not as, it's not like it once was, in other words. You know, I like to I like to eat big and talk to the guys and enjoy myself. Cat of the North, uh, that channel has a, she has some videos on there about deer camp, which is not here, not in Appalachia. It's Maine, is that where it's at, I think? It's somewhere in the Northeast and it's, it's old, old footage, family footage yeah. from the you know, 40s and 50s. It's so nice, oh, though. So nice. Matt loves it. I'll link to that yeah. so you can, if you wanted to go see it. It's just so um, 
so lovely. Even somebody like me that don't hunt or anything, even I enjoy it. It's really great. Yeah, Man, I just love some. They're not very long. No, it's it's actually what it is. It's just a, it's just a, a, a video of, of still photograph footage, mm -hmm. old, old photo album footage of, yeah. of those years and p people of, of her family from back then. And yeah. It's just a different time, you know, people dress different and they, you know, they, they look different because of hairstyles and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's like going back in time. Got a friend <clears throat> with us. Yeah. Of course, up there, a lot of them, the photos have snow in them. Oh, yeah. Hunting in the big snows yeah. like we don't get down here, but yeah. Matt really, really enjoys them. Yeah, and they're, I can put them that on a loop and watch it all the time. Mm-hmm peaceful and calming and mm. yeah, they're fantastic nostalgic videos. too mm. reminds Matt of the like I said the people he hunted with for many years that mm. are gone from this old earth now yep so lots of fun times and sometimes mischievous fun playing jokes on each other and all in good fun though but yeah. what was the funny story about the skunks something about skunks and your, your daddy and jack yeah yeah we used to hunt with this guy jack is his name great guy and back then this was in the early to mid 80s and we were in campers just camping with no power no water we had to haul water had battery lights and we built a big campfire around in between the campers and had a, a big covered awning and a, a picnic table, hand-built picnic table with a Coleman stove on it, and we cooked on it that way. And there got to be a, we got to noticing a skunk uh, almost every evening around dark or after dark, and if you walked out of the camper, you had to really pay attention and make sure you wasn't about to just step out on top of him or, or walk, you know, close enough for him to spray you. And, Daddy, he got a little worried that the thing was going to, he thought he might try to get up under his camper and live there, you know. So to keep that from happening, he started feeding the thing under Jack's camper. Gosh. He'd get little potted meat cans and little canned meat, stuff like that. And he slid them way up under the camper there where you couldn't see them. Well, that thing found them and got up under there and started eating them. And one morning... I don't know how, I don't, it's been so long ago, I don't remember exactly how long this went on, but one morning after the hunt, Jack was asking Daddy about it, did he see, see the skunk or smell the skunk or whatever. He said, that thing was under my camper last night. Well, while he was telling it, he kind of walked over there and just bent over and looked under to see, and he saw those cans. <laughs> he said, well, it ain't no wonder that thing's under my camper. He told Daddy, he said, you, you put them out of there. And Daddy said, no, I didn't do that. He said, he said, that skunks must pull them out of there, just old scrap cans or something, eating on them. He said, no, you you done that yourself. He said, Daddy said, no, I didn't either. And he said, well, how'd the skunk open them? <laughs> That's what he wanted to know. And, then and he had him. Then your daddy had to fess up. He said, you son of a gun, you. Oh, gosh. Mm. It, just stuff like that. All It never it never stopped between yeah. those two. And it, this is a ball of fun. Yeah. And they're the best of friends. Oh, yeah. And still to today. But yeah. just like to go, people that like to go on like that. Yeah, and it, it just never, it was all year, every year we hunted like that. And it just made a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You get get away from work and stuff like that and go and, and do that for a week or two or whatever. And it's, it's, it's a... It's a good atmosphere and it's good fun. Lots of laughter and memories. And oh yeah. Even when you was little. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was. I've been doing this. I've been hunting down there for forty-two or three years. I mean, I was just a boy, yeah. and when we started hunting down there. Matt still got some of the magazines he had when he was young, and he says he can remember like laying in the. So anticipating getting mm -hmm. to go the next day, laying in the camper at night, looking at the hunting magazines. and Yeah, I'd lay in there with a flashlight, uh -huh. with them open and, and read them with a flashlight because it's always dark in there. Yeah. Even, even if you had a, we had like <clears throat> propane lights and 
you still you couldn't see real good if he was off to, in a corner where the bed mm -hmm. was or even if it was after bedtime and everybody was asleep i would lay in the i had the the bed over the, the kitchen table it was a bunk bed type of thing and you're right up against the ceiling you know there wasn't this much room mm -hmm. and i'd lay in there with that magazine in my face and my flashlight and <laughs> look at those deer pictures i was eat up with it mm -hmm. Good times. Yeah. And I'm still pretty eat up with it. It's just uh, kind of in a little bit different way. You know, it ain't like it once was. But it's, I still enjoy it. Lots of memories for us, too. When me and Matt was first married, I'd go with him. And especially when Corey and Katie was little, we'd go. Mm -hmm. And so lots of memories from then, too. We don't, as they got older, we went less and less, of course. But... Lots of memories of them going, and they'd hunt with Matt sometimes. I never did, uh, hardly ever. I never hunted. Matt might leave me somewhere in the woods, let me read a book and see if I seen anything. But most of the time I stayed in camp and just waited on him to come back. And me and Corey and Katie would, and they'd go with you, though, sometimes. And You remember I killed a deer with you one time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was one of the times you'd left me sitting in, in a, a little beagle. Yeah, we had got back together and were walking, walking out, walking out or something, and I heard a dog running. Yeah. And I told you to stop. That thing may be running deer, it's just somebody I don't know whose dog it yeah. was. And sure enough, it ran it right up the ridge, right at us. Yeah. And got that one. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. standing right beside yeah, me. What did you think of that? I was happy for you. Happy was, you got it. You'd left me sitting on a big rock. That's was before kids was born. I think so. That was a long time yeah. ago. I think so. Corey and Katie loved to go though, and they'd run between the campers and play in the woods. And yep, that's good for youngins to be outside. And you know, even if you're not hunting, I mean, everybody don't like to hunt, and that's fine. But everybody ought to like being outside. Yeah. One camp you know. that Matt was at for a while, there was a good place to ride bicycles, and mm -hmm. so they could ride their bicycles. Well, ride the four-wheeler, the place you're at now. They go and they ride the four-wheeler mm -hmm. up and down the road and around the house. And yep. It's funny, I've got one. I don't even take it hunting. I don't particularly like to hunt off those things. But I do a walk. Mm -hmm. They come in handy though when you have to. Yeah, they are handy. Haul stuff. Yeah, they are. <coughs> I like to. I like to walk. One of these days, I'll probably like that thing a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Walking's good for you. Mm -hmm. Going by Shanks Mayor. Yeah. What the old timers would say. <coughs> <clears throat> it's amazing when you think about, of course, not just in Appalachia, but everywhere, all across the world, but certainly all across the United States, how people used to walk everywhere they went. Mm -hmm. I mean, very few people would have had a horse or a mule that they took every time they went somewhere. Mm -hmm. There was a whole lot of walking, yep. a whole lot of walking, whether it was to church or to school or to, mm -hmm. to wherever, to town. It's funny, too, here people i mean some people would know it but many many people don't they would be literally be trails between the settlements through the gaps of them the yeah. low gaps of the mountains and you, there's still remnants of that oh, that you yeah. can see yeah and this was back before you know, roads or cars or anything it was it was actually people trails yeah and that's how they got from one settlement to the other if if one settlement had a had a grain meal or a, a corn meal or something like that where they'd take their stuff mm -hmm. and get it milled or if they had a store yeah. and that's how they'd get there they'd walk and they did it for so long that it just it, it made permanent trails in the right. woods yeah i oh, think that's neat oh i do too i love thinking about it and those mm -hmm. trails i've always said even the trails around our house that i know that my people mm -hmm. walked on i always just gives you this feeling that if you could just sit down and be really really quiet that you might see them, you know, see them, be able mm -hmm. to look back in time and see them walking wherever they's walking to go, you know. Yeah. 
in my video the other night that I shared about the Flowers family, the first video about them, mm -hmm. uh, they are talking about, Etta Roos talking about going to walk into school. There's two different schools they could have went to in both directions, but it was two miles either school they went to. <clears throat> anyway, she ta was talking about when they would walk to school, it wouldn't, you know, as you walked along, there'd be other people join you, everybody yeah. that lived along. So yeah. you'd, you'd pick up people as you went. Yeah. And I'm sure it was the same if you were going to church or to school or, or whatever. I've heard a lot of people, a lot of in my area, t talking about Appalachia in the Appalachian region, talk about that they would, if they were going to church or to school or whatever, that they would go barefooted and they'd carry their shoes with them if they had shoes. Mm -hmm. and then wait till they got really close to like the church or whatever and then put their shoes on to mm -hmm. that way you saved your shoes you know yeah. you didn't ruin them or wear them out and daddy told me a story about one time when he was a boy and he it was his job to milk the cow before he left for school and I think this was when he was actually going to Hayesville so he was a little bit older but he didn't want to put his shoes on and go to the cow, you know, to the barn because he'd get them dirty. So he went barefooted and then he would come home and clean up and put his shoes on and then go to school. But for whatever reason, that morning, the cow stepped on his foot Gosh. and hurt him bad. Oh, but yeah. he just decided he'd go on and he wanted to go to school, you know, and he put his shoes on. And he said that was his mistake is that by the end of the day, his foot had swelled so big he couldn't get his shoe off. Gosh. And I don't remember if I think they had to cut it off, which would be just terrible in those days yeah. when you didn't have many, yeah. many, if any, you had one pair of shoes. Right. But anyway, so a total difference, but especially the walking like yeah. that. So many people walking. Yeah. Hard to imagine. Today we just hop in our cars and drive here and there and don't yeah. even think about it. <laughs> it's funny. We jump in the car and drive them here to the mailbox and back then they would have absolutely horse laughed yeah, that yeah they would have thought that was hilarious yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and most people you read accounts and daddy said that's how he was that is so pretty um that you did you didn't even think about it like if you wanted to go um another interview i did uh, miss ruby uh if you wanted to go somewhere you didn't think about how long it'd take you to walk you just stu you just struck out just and started late. walking yeah. you just did you didn't even think about it a lot of times you get dark it. on them they just didn't care yeah. they just kept going you just go on yeah. just if you was somewhere you wanted to go then you just went you just started walking and took off and went mm -hmm. so totally different time of course today yeah Sometimes I think we've got, and I'm thankful for all the modern conveniences. I'm really thankful for my hot water and my inside bathroom and my car. Uh, but sometimes I wonder if all that seems like we've got more conveniences, yet less time. Seems that way. Yeah. Even though, you know, we have, I'm not washing clothes out by the creek because I've got a washer and dryer that'll just wash them and dry them if mm -hmm. I don't want to hang them out. And certainly ain't walking from here to Murphy. I can drive. Yep. But it seems like I've got less time than those folks did. Mm -hmm. Different time. Yep. I didn't, I hadn't told Matt this, but I'll tell him as I tell you too. A lot of you have been asking also about Rachel, Miss Rachel, another person that I interviewed, dear Rachel. And I just happened to see her granddaughter, Jamie, last night. And of course I told her, I said, I was just thinking about you. Someone asked me today how Miss Rachel, if I could give an update about how Miss Rachel was doing. And she said she was doing doing good. But she told me <clears throat> a funny story about her. She said the other day I come in and said she was out on the carport and there's like some poles there and she had a hold of one of them. And, she said, well, what are you doing, Granny? And she said, I'm doing my exercise. And said she'd raise up real high on her tiptoes and then go back down, you know. And, and she said she's just out there just working, exercising, you know. And then she said, I, won't, I, won't, I bet you can't do this, Jamie. And she said, what? And she said, I didn't know what she's going to do. But she said she let go of that pole, and she just bent over and put both her hands flat on the ground. Goodness. And she said, I said, no, Granny, I can't do that. <laughs> How old is she? She's in her 90s, 96. No, she turned 97, I think. My 97. Goodness. Anyway, but so. Only I can put mine flat down if I laid down. <laughs> so I she's, can do it then. Yeah, so Miss Hicks, Rachel is doing good for all of you who've been asking about her. Oh, she's, so, a, she's a jewel. Oh, she is. Yeah, she really is.
uh, Ruby is too. I hope to get to go talk to Miss Ruby again too. She was going to make hominy, so I need to call and ask her about that. And then also the uh, flowers. Everybody I've interviewed though, they all are. I could just go through all their names. They mm -hmm. all are. All the people. Yeah, flower, they had, flowers, they had a good bunch. Yeah, they? yeah. I hope to, uh, I've got more to share with them, but I hope to have even more. I hope to go back and talk to some of them again. Yeah. So, I guess you're ready to go shank Smear into the house, ain't you? Yeah, I know exactly what's sitting on the counter in there, and I've been ready for it for about an hour. Um, you've already had it once today. Uh, I'm going to have it twice today. I made Matt some country ham and biscuits and eggs for breakfast, oh, red-eye gravy. Goodness. And, of course, there was some ham left over and some biscuits, so that's what he's going to what he's gonna have for dinner today. Hey, just that's that's, that's a special treat there. Old, was, old timey country ham and homemade biscuits is hard to beat. Yeah, that was especially good ham too. Oh yeah, yeah. where'd we get that? We got it from Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply. Gosh, another great sweet. interview with a sweet dear person that we've done, but oh, yeah. her store is gonna be no more yeah. after this week. Gosh, so. I hate that. And I think we bought the last. I think we might have bought the last two packs that they had the day we was there. And, and of course, they weren't going to get any more because of the... Man, that stuff's good. There might have been one pack left. I can't... No, I think I bought all three packs, and you took one I to took Georgia. I took one down there with And me. I kept two, yeah. We ain't ate it yet, neither. Well, now you know how good it is. Yeah. It's really good. Gosh, that stuff's good. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm ready to eat some more of it. I'm hungry. You've worked me hard, and I'm hungry. Yeah. Plowing's hard. Yep. How'd you like to be doing it with a mule and or oxen? I wouldn't. I ain't never done that. Daddy, daddy done it. Yeah. Plowed with a mule. You could if you had to. I probably could if I had to, I guess. It'd be awful rocky to do it here, let me <laughs> tell you. Well, and we'd need the mule or the oxen too. Yeah. And the plow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're always grateful when you stop by to help us celebrate Appalachia. It's Strange to say making a garden since we're kind of putting it to sleep, but this is still part of it. We're hoping that those mat tilling a couple of times this winter will decrease our squash bugs next year. Um, and we're already thinking about, you know, we hope next year it's a, a year that we don't have as much sadness and we, we can put up more stuff and mm. grow more things. So we're always glad when you stop by to visit with us. I can't believe how many leaves have fallen this week. We've lost a lot. Well, it's, it's look at time. that up there. It's time. I guess. Give it another week and look. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They'll all be gone except the except the oaks. Except and the, the beach. Uh, them tough oaks and beech that hangs on till the other. Yeah. Some of them hang on till the new buds push them off. Yeah. I like the way the beach looks and shining through the woods mm. when there's nothing left. It's almost like Christmas ornaments. Yeah, you can see them way down mm -hmm. through the woods. You can see a beech tree. Yeah. Get that stuff all on there. I know. I got it on my shirt. I hope it comes off. I didn't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't even realize that. Well, a little bit right there. That might be popsicle with that high, though. Oh, look how high mine is. I hope it comes out. Have to scrub, do some scrubbing. You have to go to the creek with a washboard. Mm-hmm. Pretty peaceful out here. Yeah. I think all the animals know the impending weather's coming. Absolutely. If they didn't know, they wouldn't live long. Yeah. That looks so much better. I don't know why we waited so long to do that. Yeah. I see what you're talking about now over there, all those tomatoes. Yeah. But they'll, the one night, if it really does get down in the 20s, they'll just fall over. Okay. You have it too, though. And my flowers will just fall over too, but. Going back squirrel hunting? I don't know. 
Maybe they're all hiding. That's a ball of fun with that little thing, but it's, golly, it's a pain. I mean, if you load it, then you're going to be clean. Yeah, you got to clean it. And if you shoot it, you got to, I mean, it's a mess to clean, but gosh, it's fun. Yeah. So far, I've not done too good with it, but it's fun. I don't know what happened this morning. I've noticed that in the woods deer hunting a lot. There's some days that squirrels, and I probably should know this, I just don't, but some days they don't get, they won't get out and get stirring until 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And then another morning, it seems to be just like that morning, they're just as soon as it's loud enough to see, they're running everywhere. Mm. And I don't know what the difference is. I mean, they had a hard night and they go to sleep. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yesterday. Was that yesterday? When you went? Yeah. I don't remember if it was yesterday before. Them things was everywhere. Just right here. Yeah. All over the place. And I went this morning and I seen, finally did see one. And I think I seen it twice. I mean, yeah. I thought I seen two, but I'm pretty sure it's just the same one. I seen it two different times and I missed it. Huh. Well, you ready to go get your ham biscuit? Yeah, let's go. 